Hey, my friends. Hope you guys are doing great today. I thought it'd be kind of fun to just do something a little different here and and switch over to talking about kits. It's been a while since we've really talked about kits here and just wanted to do a fun project just to kind of just think out loud for a moment with you guys and talk about a modern minimalist uh, survival kit, something that could be put into a pocket. Maybe it's a cargo pocket or a jacket pocket or maybe a pouch, maybe a, a pouch that could be put on your belt. Uh, something that can be uh, easily assembled with common stuff that's going to be lightweight and it's going to be small in form factor and for the most part, a very affordable. Of course, you could upgrade a lot of these items, but you may not have to because these are pretty good to go. Uh, but, you know, you may have different needs than I, so you may want to make a few changes. But this is just something to think about. It's more like a mental exercise and I'm doing this based off of the 10 C's of survival. And I've been using the 10 C's of survival for like over 10, 15 years, probably. I don't even remember. It's been a number of years I've been using it. And it's it's really cool. Like it, it helps me, re or at least reminds me of the essentials, just kind of to help start myself, get going in a kit system. And so let's just jump into it. I have obviously 10 different uh, C's of survival that I'm going to be basing off uh, conclusions uh, for various items. So the first is cutting tool, cutting tool. And there's all kinds of cutting tools that are lightweight, small and all that. But I wanted something that was readily available. And that's pretty much anywhere that is, you know, considered even halfway a sporting goods store or someplace that, that sells, you know, multi tools or cutting tools. I've even seen at gas stations, this particular product, and that's the, the Swiss Army Classic SD. They're just pretty much everywhere. I think the average price now is around $15, but I have seen them recently go down as low as $10 on just uh, short-term sales here and there. Uh, so it's it's something that it's not a bad option. Let's just say that. It has a cutting edge, has scissors, has a little file, a small driver. It has tweezers and a toothpick. And it's pretty easy to connect it to a keychain or put it into a small kit system. It's just really not a problem. It's been around for a while, many years. It's tried and true. And let me say, it's kind of like a standard, you know. And there's other types of tools out there that are small. Don't get me wrong. Leatherman has a few. Uh, Gerber has a few and so forth. But if you're talking about kind of the standard, like what people really kind of go to, um, if you don't need pliers, then this is a really small option that is lightweight and affordable. So the next is cover. And, you know, when I think of this, I typically default with the idea of a tarp or a substantial poncho, some other type of rain gear. Maybe it's a two piece rain gear set that you can put on your person. Uh, but I have to say, though, that if you're going as minimalistic as possible, a contractor garbage bag, a heavy duty, a thick mill contractor garbage bag, or even like a, a yard bag, man, it does a really great job. And you can modify them in different ways. You can make a tarp out of it. You can make it your own poncho out of it. You can do so much with it. Uh, you can use it to cover gear to keep it dry and it's and so forth. I mean, there's just just dozens and dozens, of, if possibly, maybe even hundreds of things you could do with this bag. So that's really cool. And I would have at least one of those. And also, when it comes to containers, I would have a, a type of bag system as well. Because, I mean, if you're trying to be compact and considerate of space and weight, I think a sealable plastic bag is a lot better to go than like a big heavy metal canteen or water bottle, even though I prefer those or even a big pot. I prefer those if they're available, but you know, when's the last time you try to shove a big pot in your cargo pocket? Well, it ain't going to work. It ain't going to fit. Even like most water bottles aren't going to fit well in a cargo pocket or in a side pocket or a jacket pocket. So let's just be realistic they do have collapsible cups and things. That could be an option. I was thinking about that. But you could carry one or two of these uh, like sealable plastic bags. And what I would be more specific, I would go with like heavy duty freezer bags. 
and I would go with the one gallon bags. I probably have two of them, you know, uh, because they're, they are so lightweight and, and so, um, so small in form factor when you fold them down. And I would imagine you can get these for probably 20 cents or less in most locations. So really affordable. Combustion. Now, this is where it can get kind of different for different people, depending on where you live. But I must say that fire steel and a, a small, like, mini lighter, like a, a mini Bic lighter, those are really good options. There's many, many others, though. You have Fresnel lenses, you know, that actually magnify the, the sunlight and focus it. So the Fresnel lens could be an option. That would be, like, really, really compact and lightweight. But a lot of people aren't so good at using them. And uh, you kind of have to practice a bit. You would think it would be easy, but there's a little bit of practice involved. So you can get really small fire steels. And uh, that definitely is is a practical way to go about it. But I think it's probably the easiest for most people just to get the smallest lighter possible. And I would go with cordage um, next and say that, believe it or not, um, nylon dental floss is stronger really than you think it is. And I mean, they make dental floss and other materials as well, to my knowledge. But I have always gotten the nylon and I put this to the test last year and I built a full shelter. And I mean like a shelter with walls. I had like six foot walls around the actual lean-to and I left it up and most of the shelter stayed together for six months. At the nine month point, the entire shelter collapsed. But this shelter had went through numerous storms. Even a tornado uh, was in the area. There's a couple of miles away. And so there were some high winds. And this nylon thread or dental floss held its own for all that time. So I was really impressed. And, and most of the, you know, the, the binding was only like two or three wraps around and then a, a nice tie off. So it wasn't like I, 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 I wrapped it like 10 or 20 times and, you know, you had this thick wad of nylon thread. No, I didn't even put that much on the shelter. So you can typically get a nice size container or roll of, you know, nylon dental floss for like under $2. In my area, it's about a dollar. And you can even get some of the more smaller travel size. This is what I would recommend for this kit uh, for a dollar or less. At least in my area, you can do that. So that's really cool. In terms of, uh, you know, compass, I mean, for this kit, it just makes the most sense to get the highest quality button compass you can find. Um, if you have a little extra money, get two of them so that you can kind of, you know, look at each compass and just to kind of verify the other compass. I mean, that's like one of the worst things is that you just trust a compass and you only have one compass and you're not for sure about your direction because you don't have a lot of skills to read the sun or any of that. And you travel for days in the wrong direction and you end up in a location that's worse than where you came from. That's like a living nightmare. So you don't want that. You really want to make sure you know where you're going and going to a location that's correct. And so if you can carry two compasses and when it comes to cotton products, one of the few things that I will carry with me that is cotton is going to be a cotton bandana. Now they do have synthetic bandanas and I do have a few of those but I hardly ever, ever use them. And I've pretty much have taken them out of my kits over the years. Uh, they do have some uh, like polyester blend uh, bandanas. They're not horrible, but I still don't use them. I, I, I think that I would say that I would just completely stick with just 100% cotton bandanas. And I would carry two of them. Uh, one color of your choice, whatever you like, and one bright coloration. I just wouldn't go with red because if you have to use that bandana for first aid, it's hard to see if you're bleeding still or you're bleeding through the bandana if it's red. So I would go with the bright coloration, just not red. And that would probably be like a bright like orange or yellow, something like that. And just be mindful, though, that it could be in a winter environment. There could be snow. So you might want to avoid white. Um, even though in some environments, white really stands out and, you know, in contrast to the environment, but if there's snow down, um, white can, you know, white bandana will just get, will blend in with the, the snow. 
So I kind of avoid white for that reason. Uh, but that just depends on where you live. If you live in a, in a desert environment that never gets snow, well, it might be okay to have white. Canvas sail needle. Um, yeah, an awl or an actual sail needle is awesome. Uh, but another alternative, this is, of course, if you don't really need to sew. If you do want to sew, then obviously this may not be a good option, of course. But um, is to have some safety pins. And so I go with some stainless steel and I go with at least two or three different sizes, at least a large and a small, but sometimes even a medium sized safety pin. And of course, you can always throw in like a, a, an oversized sewing needle uh, or, or an actual canvas sail needle if that's something that you like as well. And the reason for all this is that it helps get out splinters, um, help make repairs, you know, on your, your gear. It could be your backpack. It could be your clothing. It could be your shoes. Or whatever. The next is a candle. Now, a lot of us don't really carry candles in our kits, in our survival bags and all that. Uh, candles can be a bit delicate. They can be brittle. They can break. Uh, some candles are a bit more resilient than others. But, you know, just generally speaking, a candle is, is not as robust as some people think. And so they can also be fairly heavy and bulky. And so for the most part, you know, most people aren't going to be, you know, having that available or they won't prefer it. And so because it's the modern day, um, you have a, a full range of keychain lights. Now, if you're looking at something that you want to be able to charge immediately or I mean, charge, I mean, like uh, off of the grid. Uh, but you kind of realize that maybe maybe you don't have that option. And so you you don't want a rechargeable light. I totally understand if you get like a light that has the means to just replace the battery, like alkaline batteries. So that there's nothing wrong with that. If you choose an, uh, an alkaline light, just make sure you have a few spare batteries and you're good to go. Um, in this kit, though, it's just because I want to, to choose something that is rechargeable Um because I have a lot of things in my other kits to help recharge things uh, via USB, I choose this uh, rechargeable keychain light. And this is the new Nikkor Tube version 2.0. A lot of people don't even know that this is out. It's been out for a few weeks. It's on Amazon right now for $9.99. And the Tube 2.0 a version is um, is a little brighter than the original, and I think it even has a little bit longer runtime, and I think a couple of new features, and uh, you know it is what it is, but it's a pretty cool light that can run a quite a long time, and it's just super lightweight and super small. And lastly, cargo tape. Um, I'm not a real big fan of like 3M tape for the most part, or even like the Duck brand. I just I mean, it, it works in some applications, but what I've found personally is that Gorilla Tape or Gorilla Duct Tape works the best for me. Now, for some applications like Hurricane Tape, um, some of that actually has uh, like reinforcement, like fiberglass reinforcement in the tape. That might be something that's good for you if you need some rigid tape. Um, the military uses different variations of uh, of a duct tape called thousand miles per hour tape, and they have other types of tape as well. But for just the average civilian, if you're wanting to go with a real heavy duty tape, uh, you know, I would kind of avoid the the duck brand and the all these other gimmicks out there. I could just list a whole line, you know, page of this stuff. Just stick with the Gorilla Tape. It's tried and true. And let me tell you, I have have I actually have some Gorilla Tape right now that's been outside for like almost four years. And it still works just fine. It's been through some crazy temperature ranges from all the way down to negative 33 to almost 120 degrees. And let me tell you, it's still tacky and, and it sticks and it, it's doing its job. And I'm curious about how long that stuff will last out there. Uh, it's very impressive stuff. So, yes, you know, it's not the cheapest tape out there, but you're getting some really good stuff. So you pay for what you're getting and I think it's well worth it. I just want to thank you for coming along and checking out this video. Uh, if you have any thoughts about kits and, you know, if you when we're talking about modern minimalist survival kits, how would you put yours together? Thanks for watching. Catch you later.